This video is the next in the series of the Knit Companion videos, and in it we're going to talk about smart counters. And I get the idea a lot of people already know what smart counters are because I've had so many requests for this video. Um, if you are new to the software, please don't watch this video first. We're really diving in, we're building on things that we've covered in previous videos, so this video, everything is going to look very confusing because uh, I'm not going to explain everything from the very start. So go to the Knit Companion playlist. You can click the little I in the upper right hand corner or I'll put it in the video description field below and start with the first videos. And if you're brand new to Knit Companion, you can visit the App Store for your touchscreen device, either Android or Apple, and look for Knit Companion, one word, and you can download the free version of the app. The free version has a ton of features that you're going to use all the time, like interacting with your PDFs and using the simple counters and using the highlighter bar to keep track of where you are, the stuff that we use all the time. So in this video, we are going to um, talk about smart counters. They have a lot to do with linked counters that we covered in the, uh, in the last video. Uh, they're very similar to link counters that way. Um, and in, in these videos, we keep getting deeper and deeper and discovering more and more features and the more you practice it, of course, everything just gets a lot easier. But there is a way to buy your patterns with all this stuff already set up if you want. <laughs> and in January, we're going to have a video on KC Designs. That's where designers can upload their patterns to Knit Companion, and they have tech editors that are maximizing all of the Knit Companion features um, so that when you buy the pattern, you get it with all of this stuff set up already. And we're going to go into this more in January, but when you do that, Knit Companion and Ravelry are connected. So if you buy it on Knit Companion, it shows up in your Ravelry library. If you buy it on Ravelry, you can get it in your Knit, in Knit Companion. Um, I'll know, I don't even know all the details about this yet. That's uh, I just know it's pretty cool that someone's setting all this stuff up already for you. Um, but that's uh, something you might want to check out. I'll give a link to KC Designs and you can browse the patterns that are already in that catalog. I'll give that in the video description field below and on my website. So let's go ahead and start talking about smart counters because I think the biggest thing with smart counters isn't like getting into the software and figure and, and setting it up. I think the biggest thing is like getting your mind around how it's different from linked counters and the how the software is going to work for you with this, right? Like getting your mind around the whole thing, I think is the, the most, the, not, the hardest part. Yeah, but I, I'm gonna explain it. I'll make it easy for you. <laughs> I'll do my best. So last video in linked counters, that is a way to link up different counters when you have a pattern with the words at the same time, right? So you're knitting along with your sweater or whatever, and you're also doing waist shaping and you're also doing buttonholes. You have some, your pattern would require you to have three counters going, right? For the waist shaping, for the, for the um, sweater knitting and for the um, buttonholes. I have to remember what my examples are. <laughs> so that was linked counters. And linked counters and smart counters do the same at the same time work for you. But here's the difference. This is breaking it down in simple terms. Linked counters are going to work for you when the fabric of your pattern, I'm gonna keep going with sweaters here, the, the, the fabric of your sweater is a simple pattern like garter or stockinette, something that you don't have row by row instructions for, right? Um, you don't have to read every line of text to find out what the next row is because it's just knit every row or knit the right side, purl the wrong side. Now, so that's linked counters. Smart counters are when the fabric of your pattern requires row by row instructions, like a cable pattern or a lace pattern, something where you're looking, you have to look at instructions for each and every row. Does that make sense? It took me a while to get here. I got here, that's how I can explain it. Linked counters for very simple fabric with at the same time instructions, smart counters, for row by row instruction, fabric pattern uh, knitting with also at the same time instructions, okay? So linked counters before, now we're on smart counters. The other thing about smart counters, if you are keeping up with the videos that we're putting out, smart counters use one tap markers. 
You remember one tap markers is what we set up with either charts or written instructions so that the exact row that we're on, like in a chart, is highlighted. And when you tap the marker, the next row of the chart is highlighted. And you tap the marker in the next row, or the same thing going down with written instructions, right? So smart counters work with one tap marker. Smart counters work with one tap marker because you have row by row written instructions. So you've got it now. You understand it now. It took me a while to get there, but I think I've, I've given it back to you in a way that makes sense. Okay, but I'm not done talking yet. <laughs> so with smart counters, we have two different counters that we're working with. And this part is pretty simple. The first one's called a repeat counter. And that's when your instructions say something like repeat row six, four times, or repeat rows one through 12 twice. Anytime instructions are going to be repeated, we get the app to recognize that that's happening so that um, when we're tapping the counter, it knows to run through those instructions twice. That's a repeat counter. And then a shaping counter is used for really anything else. It's called a shaping counter, but it's used for uh, increases, decreases, for waste or bust or whatever else, uh, placing buttonholes, again, changing colors, really anything that isn't a repeat you know, something that requires a bit more instructions. So we have those two kinds of, um, of smart counters. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything because I don't want to get in here and then have part of it be confusing. And I think I've got all of it. So when you're working with smart counters, you tap the counter once, all of your counters advance at once, the reminders that you need for each row advance. And if you make a mistake and you have to frog back and unknit some rows. When you work backwards, all of your counters go backwards too. So you don't have to figure that out. I mean, we never make mistakes, right? We don't need that. <laughs> anyway, the setup isn't very hard. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, here we are in the software. I am in a sweater pattern right now, and I'm going to set up both different kinds of, <clears throat> of uh, smart counters. So first thing I'm gonna do is go over here to this text. And I have this set up already with one tap markers. So as I tap through, the row I'm on is highlighted. And be sure to watch those videos that I link to um, to get that set up. But for now I'm gonna reset this. And we're going to set up smart counters on this. And the first one I'm gonna use for this is a repeat counter. If you take a look, it goes row one, two, three, four, and then rows five, six, seven are all the same row. It's the same row repeated three times, five, six, seven. So I want to set this up so that when I run through these, this row is highlighted one, two, three times. Because otherwise, when I tap through, it would just go to the next one, right? So let's take a look. I'm going to go to Setup. And then a button we haven't used before, way down here, this is the Smart Counter button. And this first window we get is just an overview of the whole piece. We're not setting anything up really yet. And this first thing, the, the thing about smart counters is the software is gonna ask you everything it needs to know. You don't really have to think much about it. That's why it's easy to set up. For knitting type, flat and in the round, we're gonna skip that and first row direction, we're gonna skip that. Those are features that are coming in Knit Companion soon, but we're not really using those yet but we'll take a look at piece repeat limit. And in this pattern, because it's a sweater, it's most likely going to tell me to repeat these rows until I get to 10 inches, right? It's not going to tell me to repeat them twice. But if it did tell me to repeat them twice, I would put piece repeat limit at two. But because I'm knitting for 10 inches, I don't have a limit on the number of times I can knit them. I'm gonna leave that at zero. So get our, to get our repeat counter set up, I'm gonna tap the plus. Yes, tap the plus, a row repeat counter. And we've seen this before. You see that this first row is highlighted. And uh, again, I should mention, everything I'm gonna show you works in both chart and rented instructions with one tap marker set up. But I'm gonna show you on written instructions first. And because we read written instructions from top to bottom, we always set up our uh, smart counters from top to bottom. And because we read charts from bottom to top, that's how we set up the smart counters. 
So the row that I, I need to highlight the row that I want to repeat. So I'm going to drag this blue bar down and this top one I always have a hard time grabbing. There we go. I just want that row highlighted. Now keep in mind if the pattern said repeat rows two to four, you can highlight all three of those rows and that can be part of the repeat. But in this case it's just one row. So um, when I go down here, I can see that it's named row repeat. That's fine. I can leave it at that name. I can change the color if I would like just by tapping this and repeat how many times? This is five, six, seven. So I'm going to change this number to three. Okay, that's all set up. That's done. Let's take a look. Go back to knit. Let's see what happens when I run through this. One, two, three, four, five, and take a look. Up here above my counter, it says one of three. I'm going to tap it again. It's two of three, three of three, and then finally it pops down to the next row. So I had to repeat that three times. Isn't that great? Totally customized. So let's take a look at the other kind of um, smart counter. And for that, we'll do it in a chart. And what I'm, this is going to be a shaping counter. So we are going to, uh, well, let's take a look at our pattern. We have waist shaping and buttonholes. And that's what I want to add. I'm going to add a waist shaping uh, smart counter and a buttonhole smart counter. So let's go back to this chart and go to setup. And then our smart, cut, uh, smart counter button down here. And again, this first window, this first thing we see is just about the whole piece. We haven't set anything up yet. I'm going to leave the piece repeat limit at zero again. Tap the plus. Yes. I've added and deleted enough of these uh, smart counters when I was practicing this for you that um, the software keeps asking me, are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I'm sure. I want to add a shaping counter. And uh, we have a little bit more to look at here because this gives us more options. First thing, of course, is we can change the color. We'll make it that. And we can rename it. And I'm going to name this Waste Shaping. The next thing is start either at row or manual. If you're starting at row, that means the pattern tells you exactly which row you want to start on. Manual, the pattern would be telling you to knit for, you know, five inches or something before you start. So since I know the exact row I want to start, I'll leave it on at row and change it to five. So start at row five. And then over here, under waist shaping, we can add details of the step that we're supposed to take. So tap on that. I'll leave the name step. And let me take a look. We just read it, but I wrote it down so I don't have to, to, I don't have to flip back. I want to decrease one stitch at end of row every two rows eight times. So how often? It's every two rows, every other row. And how many times? I want to do that eight times. I could tap until if I had inches to go to, but I haven't uh, how many times. And then I'll type the exact instructions here so I don't have to flip back in the pattern. It's all right here for me. So decrease one stitch at end of row. I'm done there. That is good. Let's see what happens now. Go back to knit. So row one, two, three, four, five. Look, popped up on row five. Here are my instructions. Waist shaping, decrease one stitch at end of row. Now, here's a cool thing. <laughs> this is a very cool feature. If I tap to try to get past, the, the, the software says, whoops, wait a minute. You didn't do your waist shaping. See this little check mark here? You have to check that off for it to actually go away so you can advance to the next row. You can't forget to work these steps. The software won't let you. When I go to row seven, it comes back up again, waist shaping, decrease one stitch at end of row, and you see right here, step repeats, I'm on two of eight. Isn't that great? <clears throat> now let's reset this, because I want to add another one. I'm only resetting it. You don't have to reset it to add another one. I'm only resetting it so 
you can see how it would all work together. Let's go to Setup and the Smart Counter button because we still have to add buttonholes. So again, we're on the main page for this piece and I don't need to change anything else. I just need to add another shaping counter. Tap the plus and this time another shaping counter and let's change this color to pink and this one we're going to name buttonholes. And my notes here say I want to start buttonholes at row seven. See, I tell you the, the app asks everything it needs to know to set this up. You don't have to, you only have to read what's on the screen to do it. And then below buttonholes, there's the step. I want to fill in the details of the buttonholes down here. I'll leave it named step. How often? It's every 10 rows nine times for nine buttonholes. And here's a cool thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember how I typed instructions in here last time? This time, I'm not going to type. I'm going to grab a piece from the pattern, that little bit of instructions from the pattern, and just pop it in there. So I'll tap piece. And we've done this before in the software, lots of times. Tap the plus, And now it's letting me pick the page where the instructions are. It's on page two. And here we are with the blue arrow telling me to highlight what I want. You can highlight it, it snaps in, you can tidy it up a bit. There we go, that looks good. The blue crop button is highlighted. I can tap that when I'm ready. That's done. Okay, I'm, I'm done with this one. So go back, go back to knit. Maybe, let's see. Let's see what happens here. Okay, fastest knitter in the world. Row one, two, three, four, five. I have waist shaping. The first of eight waist shaping, decrease one stitch at the end of row. Let's say I did that. Six, seven, and look at here. Okay, I have waist shaping and buttonholes in this row. This is so great because it's all here, right here. I don't have to flip through pattern pages or anything. <laughs> Everything's here for me. So waist shaping, decrease one stitch at end of row. If I tap buttonholes, there is the little bit of instructions that I grabbed from the second page of the pattern for my instructions for buttonholes. Okay, I worked my buttonhole. I worked my decrease for the waist shaping. Keep going through. I'm trying to get to the next buttonhole, obviously. <laughs> there we go. It happens again. I'm on step seven of eight for waist shaping. When I go to buttonholes, I'm on the second of nine buttonholes. My instructions are there. I'm reading my chart, knitting along. Everything's happening exactly as it's supposed to. And once I finish, um, let me check these off. Let me see how close I am to, this is the last of the waist shaping, eight of eight, and so it's not going to pop up next time. It just disappears. I'm done with that. Isn't that cool? And that's it. I hope that helps. Uh, smart counters, I'm going to be using them a lot when I have at the same time instructions. I hope you will too. Good luck.